and welcome back to Ports of Tonight. Now, last week was the press launch of Chalk Hill Lives. It's Pompey's brand new soap opera. One of the most extraordinary projects ever taken on by the Prince's Trust, a community TV soap opera. Chalk Hill Lives is the world's first internet soap. I'd like to watch that. It sounds a fascinating idea. Go to the internet, look up Chalk Hill and download it. Is that how you do it? Yeah, first episode. Well, you've got, to, you've got to have a DVD, I think, to put it onto. Or what was the other thing? Oh, you watch it, you hear broadband, apparently. Um, Both of those mean nothing to me. It's, the establishment is eroding, it's all changing, and the internet is responsible for that. People would rather watch, like, skateboarding terrapins on YouTube. We're not watching the, you know, the terrestrial schedule. I choose and watch at my convenience. My name's Steve Surridge. I was the executive producer of Chalk Hill Live, the community-produced Portsmouth-based um, soap opera, which I created heavily influenced by the Australian soaps. I love life. I think we should celebrate life. And I, I'm a, kind of a bit concerned uh, with UK media with that. It's all doom and gloom focused. And I've always kind of rallied against that in the UK, in UK TV. I think we, we could be a much more sort of positive nation if we if television was more optimistic. I think what I did with Chalk Hill, making it sort of audience interactive, where the audience could be within the show, I think that is inevitably the future of telly. How could you do it to me, Sammy? How could you do it? Do what? After everything I've done for you. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. If you didn't do this, who the hell did? My interest was activated at the age of five when I first saw the Star Wars movies, which totally blew me away. And I kind of I remember thinking quite from a young age that, wow, if there's a career out there where you can seem to have so much fun and make loads of money, I want to be in that career. I was a kid at school that had all the action figures and the Death Star and the Attack Walker and everything. I was that kid. And I was lucky enough as a uni student to work on Brookside and be up in Brookside close when Trevor Jordash was under the garden. Um, yeah, and that, that led me to sort of my, my love of soap opera. Brookside taught me how to make soap. I didn't know if I could pull it off. I basically promoted this concept and, and got these people on board and then we started making it. And the first few episodes were very ropey, but it did kind of look like a TV show. I think the only way you can ever learn about filmmaking is to do it yourself. You cannot read books because you just, and you know, so much goes wrong and there's so much compromise, but through that is learning as well. You know, if you work in industry, a big corporation, you're just a silo in the bigger chain of things, you know, a tiny cog in a bigger wheel kind of thing. But when you're doing it yourself, you have to know about every cog and I educated myself. I ended up training with Hollywood's number one acting coach called Ivana Chabuk, who taught Brad Pitt and Jim Carrey, amongst others. And her whole approach to acting was that you focus the mind, so you're focusing your thoughts to create emotion, which then becomes the petrol for your performance. And so actors actually don't know what they're gonna do in the scene because the emotion is kind of what's driving them. And once I introduced that to the cast, oh my God, there was a massive shift. The change on the screen was massive. You could suddenly see, and I think that's one thing I learned that with TV characters, you're reading their thoughts, so to speak, I think. The, you know, in drama, they talk about subtext and the drama be between the lines. And I think you're actually, TV viewers can actually read the actor's thoughts. But it's tough, it was, you know, it's hard to do. And also as well, I used those techniques because I trained again with um, John Truby, who's Hollywood's number one script doctor as well, by doing Chalk Hill. And again, the, the sort of, the, the rise in, le in quality level with storylining and script writing, once you sort of engage your mind in your own emotion and then start writing. We have a word with Selena Sharp. Mrs. Sharp is unavailable for interview. We're not interested in the knife incident. We'd like to talk to her about abandoning the boy in her care, Gavin Harvey. There's a very real chance that Gavin might never wake up. We were doing single camera drama, so what you had to do, you had to block the action and then film it from one angle and then film it again from another angle, film it again from another angle. So it's constantly repeating the drama. We always had to stop filming when that was... It's funny, actually, because this is a cul-de-sac and you think, oh, it'd be really quiet, but it's not. It's have to create your own bubble and just focus on what you're doing because, you know, if you actually step back and look and 
you think what you're doing is it's bonkers you know you're recreating reality about reality and it was quite a cartoony style that i purposely put on it so i to aid the kind of optimistic kind of approach and just to make it look colourful on camera. And since doing Chalk Hill, um, where I studied like sort of the mind with um, Ivana Chabuk, who was the, the Hollywood acting coach, that really opened the next stage of my life and I've, I've become a life coach um, teaching positive mental health um, techniques. And I've also been writing another web-based drama called Scars, which is about um, students at university and them having to sort of confront who they really are. Watch this space. Chalk Hill is the beginning of, um, yeah, beginning of a big concept, which is not dead. Mm -hmm.